What's up, guys? Welcome to the PL Pod on Daniel Talks Football. I'm obviously Daniel, and I'm here to talk to you about the Premier League. It returned this weekend, and it was a great weekend of action with big games such as United versus Brighton, and uh, Brighton coming out on top in that one, City versus West Ham, and Fulham, Fulham versus Liverpool. On top of this, we're going to be talking about some FPL, as well as a deep dive into Everton Football Club, plus some more special things. And we have a guest on the line for this, and the guest we have on the line I'm very, very excited about. We are obviously doing an Everton deep dive, and that meant there was only one man that we could get on the line. It's the Everton fan himself, it's Javier. How are you, mate? I'm okay. How are you? I'm all right, mate. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, a lot of work's gone into this. Um, so hopefully people end up listening to this. That's the hope. We hope. Well, we do hope. Um, I do just quickly want to thank anybody that's come over from, you know, wherever that is. Um, I genuinely thank you all so, so much. Go subscribe, click the notification bell. Um, that's key. Make sure you do that so that you're notified when we upload. Um, also, keep an eye out for any clips coming throughout the week of highlights from the podcast. Um, for those of you that don't want to listen to the full episodes, they will be going out throughout the week. Um, and apart from that, make sure you go follow the Instagram. Daniel Talks Football. Uh, go follow that. Um there's some great stuff that's going up on there including whenever I put an article out through Sportshood which is the uh, media company I work with um, the link to them will always be on my stories so make sure you go and check them out so you can have a read of uh, all my articles I've written currently I've written one on Casper Schmeichel and a match report on Leicester versus Brentford in case you don't know I'm a Leicester fan I won't be that biased possibly okay Javier let's move on to the opening weekend of the Premier League because uh, the Prem's back um Obviously, there were 10 games this weekend, as there always are. And, you know, it was, it was an actually decent weekend of football. I can't say I managed to catch too many of the games. But from the, from the couple of games I did see, it was actually quite a, good, quite a good weekend. How pleased are you that the Prem's back? I mean, as an Everton fan, I was actually hoping for the wait to be a bit longer. But you know what? <laughs> first game's given me hope. The first game's given me hope. The rest of the games were entertaining. I watched Man City. I watched the first 10 minutes of City against West Ham uh-huh. and then I got bored Fair I don't enough. know how and then it turns out I missed two goals which is Fair brilliant enough. yeah I uh, I watched um, Liverpool Fulham mm-hmm. and I sorry Fulham Liverpool same thing pitch was dry apologies um, and I also went to uh, Leicester Brentford um so that was a yeah, cool. that was a that was a joy as always watching us boys uh, go two and up and then concede two, but it is what it is. We won't talk about Leicester because we're very depressing. Um, actually, we'll talk about them later. Uh, United, United played Brighton obviously, and Brighton came out two one winners. Um, Moises Caicedo won that midfield battle with a uh, poor start for Eric Ten Hag. United are still struggling in that sort of deep midfield position. And they haven't been able to get Frankie de Jong over the line. Do you think it's now time to move on from Frankie? Should they keep going for Frankie? What are your thoughts on that? Because they do need a six. Because at the weekend, they were awful in midfield. Well, I mean, with the news coming out today about like illegal contracts and whatever, maybe they can try and sneak in, make a move. Or something. Yeah, but he doesn't like... want to move. He doesn't want to go to United. Yeah, but then clearly Barca don't want to keep him. I mean, clearly he wants to... Chelsea. Like, what if Barca want to get rid of him? Chelsea have entered the race. Needed. Chelsea have entered the race. I'm just going to put that out there. I think you would you'd prefer to go to Chelsea than uh, Man U I think you would but however the Ten Hag could convince them he doesn't want to go to United so if if he can't do, do you think it's time to move on uh, yeah to who you got you got many targets you got who they got you can play I think they played Ericsson up front in that game didn't they did they the, I didn't watch I it I was at, I was at the last game with it. oh they do. Start off with Ericsson, yeah, they do need someone new though. Who would you? Who would you look? If you're Ten Hag right now, mm-hmm. what names are you taking to the Glazers to go go and get these players? Ooh, um, eh, I, I can't really think of anyone right now. Number sixes. I'm trying to think. Deep hole, deep midfielder. I'm thinking. I don't know why I thought of bloody Guimaraes. Um, Neves. Yeah, of Wolves? I don't think he's United. I don't think he's a United player. As in, I couldn't see him at United. 
I, I think, good for them, I think I the I, I think what I think what they should do, and I'm not a United fan, um, is go out and get Neves and Tielemans. Seventy million, you could probably get them both for. Mm -hmm. the same same price you're exactly. looking to spend on Frankie. It's a true point, and you get two players. You get two players. You get a six, and you get an eight. Is Neves the final quality that you want to get? Maybe not. His team is the final quality you want to get. Depends if he picks up his form. On, on Sunday, he looked absolutely excellent. But they're players in, and Ten Hag needs players. However, I saw that Mark Goldbridge uh, made this point. You don't mm -hmm. want to start off the Ten Hag era with him not getting his biggest target. That's true. Because then the manager gets unhappy, and then the entire squad. Which I think he might already be. Yep. Because he hasn't got. He's got Malassia. He's got Ericsson, he's got, uh, what's the, what can I, is it, it's Martinez, isn't it? Um, there's Andrew. Andrew, yeah. Yeah. You know, they still need a striker, because Ronaldo doesn't want to be there, Martial is, Martial's always injured. Mm -hmm. They, Rashford missing to as always. Yep. They need to move on from some of these transfer targets, it's clear they're not getting them in. Funky's one of them. I can't really think of anybody else they could get in, to be honest. Um... I saw they've agreed a deal for Rabiot. Rabiot? Yeah. Off Juve. <laughs> he's he's, he's not, not United quality. He's, he's not. T Tiedemans is available for 5 million more. It's true that. Because I think it was 25 mil, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know how much it was for. All I know is that they've agreed a deal. Fair enough. So they've agreed a deal for Rabiot then. Why aren't they going out and getting Tiedemans? By the time this is going out, we're recording this on Monday. Um... Rabio could already be over the line. However, I do feel like that's a poor signing, personally. Um, Panic buying. Just a quick word on Brighton. Um, great start for Graham Potter. Do you think they could possibly push for Europe this season, or do you think they'll be happy with that mid-table sort of region? I mean, Brighton have always been that sort. Of, they're turning into outsiders at this point. Yeah. They are such a well-organised team. Mm -hmm. But... I still think, like, even though they brought in Undav, and what did he, he played about two minutes yesterday, but in all fairness, he's not had, like, the full pre-season and yeah. stuff. I think they still need that, that goal score. I agree. They don't have a... They don't have a... Put Jamie Vardy in that team, Brighton gets sixth. I could see that. Obviously, they're not going to get Jamie Vardy, but put someone like that. Put, um... <sighs> trying to think of a striker, though. It's put a 20-goal striker in that team. Yeah. And they will just score goals. Because they, they their XG's always Sorry. been high. Their XG's always been high. So get a strike mm -hmm. to finish off those chances. I could see Brighton pushing for Europe. I could. But yeah. if they bring in that extra strike, which they need, they possibly need an extra body in midfield. Because I know Caicedo looked really good at the weekend. I know Moep, who's supposed to be really good. Because uh, I watched a little bit of him at Salzburg. N not last year, because he was at Brighton, but the year before. Because... Daka mm -hmm. was obviously at Salzburg at that point. Um, and That's got gross. Yeah, they've got gross, but... I, I don't... Again, is gross looking to push to Europe quality? He was good at the weekend, from what I heard. Yeah, but he's always good, good against United. Exactly. exactly. They've got McAllister. He's not um, pushing for Europe quality. As I say, I think they just need some more quality signings. Yeah. Going out and... I was going to say Ox, but he's always injured. But someone of that quality, just not always injured, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Could you go into United and go 20 million for Fred? Is it... Is Fred a play they need? I, 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 don't, I don't watch any of Brighton, so I can't really... Fair enough. Say. I mean, I think they do need an extra body in midfield, though. They need an mm. extra body in midfield and possibly another striker. Because, you know, they're Who looking... Who is Brighton striker? It's Welbeck and... They've got, right? they've got Welbeck, they've got Undav, they've got uh, Molpar, although he's looking to go to a... Is it Salah Natana in uh, Syria? Syria. Um, they've, got, they've got a couple... They've got young lads as well. Because you know how they buy all these young lads from Ecuador. Oh, Sarmiento, and, whatever his name is. You know, yeah, you know, they buy all these young lads from God knows where for like 10 mil and then they never really get anywhere. Um... But, you know, we'll see with Brighton. I think it's a very good start, though. So, uh, fair play to Potter for that one. We'll move on to uh, City versus West Ham, which obviously uh, Erling Haaland scored two goals in that game. 
um, with his dad there to see it, of course, which is lovely after the horrific way his dad's career ended. That has chose that has shown sorry that Harland can adapt to the Prem, or at least it's shown that you know he's he, he's good. He, he works with that city system, which there were doubts with after the Community Shield game. Mm-hmm. First of all, was it a good debut? Which I presume I know your answer to. But second of all, how many goals do you think he will go on to score this year? Um, well, obviously it was a good debut. You, you've won your team the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. How many goals will he score? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think he'll get. I don't think he'll get more than eighteen. Don't you? No, I think this is how it's gonna go. He's gonna have a really good start, uh-huh. and then he's gonna get, and then he's gonna get his little injury, and then that's gonna keep that's on gonna like bugging, bugging. Yeah, yeah. I see that. I'm gonna go nineteen. I could stand. I don't know. It's it's, it's close. I don't really. I it think go either way. I think he'll get just under twenty because City do rotate. Mm-hmm. I think Haaland will be key for them in the Champions League and that's why I don't think he'll get as many in the Prem because they'll save him for the Champions League yeah because they have Alvarez who do yeah. you have Alvarez Alvarez is incredible I know he. Alvarez is really really good um, I think I think yeah 19-ish I think he'll get somewhere around there maybe 18 um, but I haven't gone for him as my golden boot winner I've said Salah um, mm-hmm. You're going to hear more about that next week, you, uh, you lovely listeners, um, when uh, we will be doing the prediction video. Yes, it's a week late. Don't kill me. Um, it's what you get for starting a podcast on the first weekend of the season, I guess. Um, it's a week late. The predictions have already been made, so we haven't been able to change them. So it's fine. Um, but no, yeah, you'll hear more about that next week. But I think, I think Haaland will do well. Don't think he'll do excellent, though. And you've said what? Seven? Can I get a final number? Uh, 17. 17. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then West Ham. Uh, again, didn't watch the game. You said you watched the uh, the first few minutes. Um, I think they started off making... Uh, they started off going close. Uh-huh. But then after that, City just started to hold the ball a bit more. Started pegging them back in their own half. And that was... Fair Basically, enough. Yeah. Obviously, um, Ariola came on within the first 30 minutes um, for Fabianski, with uh, Gianluca Scamacca also making a debut for West Ham. Do you think Scamacca will be a success in this league, or do you think it could be a Haller 2.0? It's a hard one, because when he came on, because, um, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I've, I've switched on for like, the last 10 minutes. Fair enough. Um... I, th- I think he had a chance. I think it was him who had a chance, but mm-hmm. um, City were City started to drop deeper and just turn the count, obviously. So, obviously, he didn't get much of a chance. Mm-hmm. I think he needs a loan move, though, because he doesn't look as though... I think I, I think Antonio will just start over. You think he's a loan move already? I think he... I, no, he doesn't need a loan move. I think he will go on loan. Ah, next season not next this season. season next season and then season. okay so you don't think it'll work out then at least not in the short I'm, term no I think we'll no. get no I don't think we'll get any more than five goals this year wow I like him I didn't see him I yesterday like him, but... I didn't see him yesterday so I don't know how it fits into the rest of the system but the fact that all the top clubs were chasing him says a lot yeah just a target man he's, he's the target man he's got height you he can add the ball yeah and which, so and so is Antonio system, but... which works um mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like the Conference League might be key for him. If they get a good group, he can just score goals within that. Yeah, hopefully that will do his confidence. And that might help his confidence. I'm saying across the whole season, including Europe and Cups, I'm saying 12. I think he'll get 12 goals. It won't be the most explosive start. Mm -hmm. But then I think next season they might try and phase Antonio out. Yeah. And then he'll step up and get 17-18. But I do like him a lot and I think he could be successful. The final game I wanted to go in depth in, Fulham versus Liverpool. Obviously your favourite club, Liverpool. Um, We all know you love them after the uh, Richard Arlison incident. Um, What a a bus driver he is. Um, 2-2 in the end with Jurgen Klopp coming out and uh, saying that the pitch was too dry as one of his excuses for Liverpool drawing the game. 
Do you think these excuses are actually starting to get too far? Because I know people make jokes out of them on social media. And that can happen with anything. But on a serious note, do you think these are going too far now? Because that's just... You can't... You can just tell if this was like midway through the season. It wouldn't be the pitch being dry he'd complain about. He'd complain about the lack of too many games or something. Do you think I mean, these excuses are going too far? Yeah, because the season's just started. They have they played about two games on that pitch and I don't understand how it could be dry. Mm -hmm. Also, they always seem to struggle against like lower leagues, not lower leagues, for Penel, the Premier League, obviously. Um, <laughs> Whenever, whenever a championship a side comes from the championship, mm -hmm. they always play Liverpool. This is the first time he's struggled, and the one time that he struggles, he seems to make an excuse. Yeah. He made an excuse last year about what was it? It was against I don't even know. There was too many to count. Was but, it was it a game when he lost? Because if so, I can tell you it, that was. It was even... a game that he. It was it was Burnley when they lost one 0 to Burnley ah. at home. He said that, was that last about, year? Um, I don't know if that was last year. That may have been the year before. No, season before. Yeah. Season before, sorry. Um, I think he said something about... I, don't, I can't remember what he said, but it was something to do with the Some grass being wrong. Yeah. I mean, you know, last year when we beat them at our place, um, one of two times to beat... One of two sides to beat them last year. Um, I seem to remember he, said, he came up with something after that. I remember before he's blamed Hamza Chowdhury for making rash challenges they are going they are going too far agreed he needs somebody needs to have a word because you can't keep letting him get away with it in my opinion I mean it, it, to be fair the, the excuses aren't harming anyone it's just to the point where he can't accept defeat exactly I don't know I, I think so that I mean if you're blaming a pitch being dry <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's just never happy. He, he's he got his five subs. Mm -hmm. He wanted five subs and he's got his five subs now. So I'm interested to see if that helps things. They only made four yesterday, didn't they? Mate, we made no, one. It wasn't yesterday, it was, so, it was five. Yes, two days ago. We made one and Brendan complained about fatigue. So we won't go into that. And then Nunes, obviously. Um... Oh, he's, I don't want to say it, but he's so good. Uh -huh, his go movement on. is actually his movement is something different. This he's all he's literally even if he's not on the ball, he's always involved in mm -hmm. some sort of way. He tried one back here, it didn't work, and then he has the audacity to do it again twice in two minutes. I rate like that. I mean, he's so good. He seems he seems like he doesn't care what others think. He took his shirt off in the Community Shield final, got loads of stick and didn't care. He got absolutely slated when he missed some of those chances against United. And then just bounced back and started scoring goals again. That if if he if he does actually not care, what I just think, that is so big. I mean, this guy's the mentality of a I don't even know. He's got a monster mentality. Exactly. So if he does, that's going to do him so well in this league. Yeah. Because confidence is half of it. The yeah. reason the reason Poch didn't work at PSG was because he didn't want to stroke people's egos. If Darwin Nunes is happy to receive criticism, let him. <laughs> he he couldn't care. Take I mean, it on. The one. Take it on his chin. Let him use it to fuel him. Then mm -hmm. fair play. And he, if that is the case, he will be a massive success. He will be. And if, I don't want to say it. But you because, think he'll do well. well obviously, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's going to be. Here's another one. Mitrovic. Yes, Mitrovic. Yeah. I was just going to get on to Fulham. The last player that I thought would score against, two against Liverpool was Mitrovic. <laughs> the last player. I mean, I wouldn't say the last. I'd say... Uh, give me a sec. He's Fulham's keeper. I'd say Rodak would be the last player I thought would probably... Uh, Scored two yesterday. No, but you uh, know what I mean. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. He he looks good. He does. He had thrown in the back pocket, mate. He looks really good. Is this the season it finally works for him in the prem? I don't want to say yeah. I hope. I do hope it works out for him. If it He's does, a good strike. He is a good striker. If it does, and Fulham go down, move to Everton yes. next summer. Calling it now. It's, I could actually see it. It's as well. such your signing. 
Yeah, because Calvert Lewin will leave. Yeah. What? The, even if he doesn't leave, we will make him leave. <laughs> he needs to go. Blood. Not impressed. Go. Not impressed. Not um, impressed. Good start for Fulham. Then, do you think they've got enough to stay up? Or because I think their league's really strong this year. I don't. Know I do think it's strong, but however, that sort of result against a team like that, mm-hmm. that could be a big. Comp- I, th- I think. I think they'll do a Norwich. They'll start off incredibly well. Mm-hmm. Mitrovic will get a hat trick or something at some point. Yeah. And, but they'll still go down. Fair enough. Who'll do a pookie? I can see that. I can actually really see that because I think their league's too strong. To be fair, but then at the same time, the relegate. To be fair, the relegation scrap is going to be interesting because you've got. Obviously, you're always going to have the three teams the that three, are promoted. Yeah. You Everton, have Everton, who... Leeds, Brentford, Southampton. So anyone else? What is there? Bournemouth, no, no, they're no, they've the come mind. up, mate. Um, yeah. I think that's it. I think, I think Wolves could be in a relegation scrap. That's I like, one. I still like Wolves. I still like Wolves. Um, I like Wolves, but Villa however, started poorly. They did. Could it be another season of underperformance for them? Could Gerard end up going? I think. I like Fulham. I think they looked really good. I just don't think they've got enough to stay up. No. I just don't, just don't know. Do it. Who's Fulham's team? Is they've got, they've got V Tap. Yeah. It's it's they need a, not a winger. They've got Leno. Mhm. Bringing in Leno was, was sick. Bringing in Leno was a big signing. I've heard, I heard that he was really, really good. Just don't think they'll yeah. have enough. I think Paulinho, Paulinho and Leno and possibly Mitrovic will be the three that will get moves. Yeah. See Mitrovic going to you lot. I can see Leno possibly coming to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can see, I can see Paulinho going. But the obvious one to say is Wolves. I say back to Portugal. Nah, I don't think so. I think he would. I think he'll do well. Either, so either that or um, United. Marse- not Marseille. Um, Sevilla. Olympic Lyonnais. Oh, okay. I think I think Sevilla could work actually. Um, or United. If he does well, United will go. Think yeah, mate, they need a DM. They'll snap. For thir- if Fulham go down and Polina plays well, 25 mil, they'd do that. They would do that. It's the sort of thing they'd do. Wants, I, don't, I don't know. I, I could see it. Um, one thing we will discuss before we take a, a short break is uh, FPL. Great. How did, uh, how did your FPL team go this week, mate? Horrendously because I decided not to check before. I decided not to make any changes. Or not even decided not to, I completely forgot to. So I ended up keeping Kukurella in. Ah. Uh, yeah, actually, no, to be fair, no, that, that was basically it. Uh, and then it was just Perisic didn't start, Kane yeah. had a stinker, mm-hmm. Jesus had a goal disallowed. No, he had a... No, no, he didn't have a goal disallowed, freaking hell. He had an insane soon assist, semi-assist mm-hmm. before yeah. Marte decided to... Absolutely fluff his lines. Yeah. Uh, we had Neto having a stinker. Neto was that in. Was oh, Pedro Neto. I thought uh, you'd Pedro got. Neto. I thought you were talking about Bournemouth Neto then. Um, no. um Okay. So how many points did you end up with then, or have I asked that? Yeah. I don't oh, think I asked that. Forty-five. Forty-five. Okay. I got sixty-one. Solid. That's actually Thank solid. You. Thank you. Um. So yeah, sixty-one points for me this week, um, which I'm which I'm very happy with. I think it might be worth actually going through the teams and just having a bit of a discussion about what what your thought process was with putting in certain players in. Um, we mm-hmm. can see what differences we had. I'm no I'm by no means an FPL expert, um, so don't listen to any of my advice throughout any of the season. Whenever I talk about FPL, I usually finish about mid table and you know those big leagues. Um, so don't listen to me. It's my um, just as bad. You're, you're worse, mate. You are far worse. Yeah, I'm worse. Um, yeah. Mate, last year your name was Delph and Safety. That's probably one of the ugh. best names that you've ever heard in your life. What's, who was who was your goalkeeper this week? And what was your thinking behind that that choice? Um, Edward Mendy because Chelsea have a solid defence and it worked a treat. Okay, how many points did he pick up? Uh, seven. Six, seven. Oh wow. Who, who's your backup? Just out of interest. Uh, Scott Carson, mate. Fair enough. Um, I had I've gone for the Leicester double of Ward and Iverson. Um, 
both four million, so that does save you money. Uh, Rogers has said that he's going to trust Ward as his number one starter. Ward did only pick up one point this week, though, um, which is disappointing. However, could have been six. It was never going to be six. I think two two one would have been a fair result to be honest. But yeah, it is what it is, and I got one there. Um, it could could be a good four million shout if people are looking to save money. But to be honest, the shout to Mendy is good. Um, so I don't blame you for that one. What, what was your defence looking like? I know you said you had Perisic and so did I. Um, I think that makes sense. I think it would take him a little while to gel in with Spurs um, and actually get starting. However, when he does, he's an excellent winger slash wing back and he will get a lot of game time. So I think that is a very smart decision and I also did that. Who else did you have? I had Cucurella, which uh-huh. was Didn't extremely work. stupid. Yep. Uh, Nico Williams. Good okay. million option. Yep. Always, he'll always start. Um, Trent and Scott McKenna. Because I had to have Scott McKenna in there. So, Nico Williams picked up zero points. I had him on my bench. Yep. Um, I had picked up one. I had Trent who picked up one, so I'll agree with you on that one. Uh, I went heavy in defence. I also had Cancelo who picked up seven. I wanted to bring him in, but I couldn't. And I had Reese James who picked up seven. My back four this week was Cancelo, Perisic, Trent, James. So Cancelo and, J- and Cancelo and James saved you. <laughs> yeah, seven points on both of them, um, mm-hmm. which was certainly very helpful. Um, but no, yeah, I like the shout of Williams. I think he will play. Um, Forest need to get settled. They've bought in loads of players and they still want more. They do need to settle before I think they're going to start doing well. However, I do think he is a good option, so I uh, I don't blame you for that one. What's your midfield looking like? Uh, Pedro Neto. Yep, I benched him. Did, yeah, he did nothing. I benched uh, him. Son. Okay. And my captain, Mohamed Salah. Okay. Uh, who else do you have on the who do you have on the bench then? I uh, have Carson, Lyle Taylor, just because he was cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, Andres Pereira and Anthony Gordon. Fair enough. Um, instead of... Lyle Taylor was 4.5 million, wasn't he? Yeah. I think Greenwood off Leeds is a better option than him. I've, I've, I started Greenwood, which was a bit of a mistake. I should have started Neto, probably. But Greenwood picked up, picked up one point. He's a Absolutely. striker to come off the bench for Leeds, 4.5. I went for that because it was... It will get me some points. My midfield, however, I had Rashford. Yeah, oh. Who got two. For 6.5, it's not the worst shout. No, it's not. No, it's just I, I was only saying that because he missed two sets. I know, I know, I know. Yep, yeah, thanks for the reminder. I Captain Salah, who got 24. Yep. Uh, I had Luis Diaz, who got two. Okay. Um, and then I had Neto and Andres Pro on the bench, who both got two. Um, quite content with that, to be honest. Um, I think Luis Diaz will come through throughout the season. Mm-hmm. And if not, he is that eight million option that you can easily sub out. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of them around, so you can easily take him out if needs be. Same with uh, a striker I've got in Jesus. Um, so it's good to have an eight million option in there. I went for Diaz. Didn't really work out in the end, but that's that's fine. Who were your strikers? Um, I also had Jesus, and then next time I had Harry Kane. Yep. And that's where you lost it this week. Yes. I had Haaland, mm-hmm. I had Jesus, and then I started Sam Greenwood. Um, I should have started Neto, I forgot to take uh, Greenwood out for Neto, I'm going to be honest. Um, but it didn't turn out too bad and only lost me one point. So I'm fairly happy with that. That's 61 points for me, um, mm-hmm. which I'm very, very content with. I, have you decided on what change you're making into next week? Are you making a change? Yeah, I'm taking Cucurella out. Okay. And I'm bringing in Kieran Trippier. Kevin Trippier, I like that one. I mm-hmm. haven't made a decision yet. Um, I might keep it. Because I don't think I really need it, to be honest. It's fair enough. Um, yeah, I could take out one of Neto or Rashford. Um, but I have left myself an extra 0.5 million if I did need that. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I'll probably just stick with what I've got. Give it one more week, and then if needs be, then I can do a double change. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. If, um, oh yeah, um, I saw something which Ollie is probably annoyed about. 
Okay. He benched Kulisevsky. Oli, now the listeners aren't going to have any idea who this is. Um, but Oli, I am incredibly offended by that. The ginger Swede. How can you do him like that? That is that is absolutely awful. But yeah, what I will do is we will uh, we will have a quick break and we'll come back to do a deep dive into Everton FC. So let's do that. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the PL Pod here on Daniel Talks Football on YouTube. We are back to start talking to Javier to uh, do an Everton deep dive. But before we do that, I'd just like to remind you to subscribe, switch the notification bell on, and uh, like the video, go comment. I feel like a proper YouTuber saying all of this. Uh, go over to the Instagram, follow that, Daniel Talks Football. And now you've done all that, we can uh, get into the next segment. Okay, Javier, Everton. Transfer activity. What have Everton done so far this window? So we brought in Tarkowski. Uh huh. No. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, Tarkowski, yeah. <laughs> um, He's got the first one wrong. Vinagre on loan. Of course, I forgot about that. That's very irrelevant. Really? Yeah. Not irrelevant. And obviously, Dwight McNeil. And we've got three incomings probably okay. in the next week. Yeah. Continue. Which are Cody on loan, uh -huh. um, Idris Garner Gay, and I've forgotten his first name. Something Onana. Is it Amadou? It's not Andre Onana. That's the keeper. Is it Amadou Onana? Let me see. It is. It is Amadou Onana. I'm so knowledge. smart. Um, that's, that's that's good business considering you were down there with us at one point for not doing anything apart from Tarkovsky. Yep. And all of a sudden we've got six signings. Yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting about Vinagre. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Is it Vinagre? Vinagre. Vinagre. Um, keep forgetting about him. <laughs> he's not needed. Is he? I think he is. He's, he's, got... a, he's, he's the backup for um, Mikolenko. Cause yeah, but... he's, he's the only left-back of the club. Yeah, I know you've got Mikolenko, so I'd get maybe, but he didn't really do that well with Wolves. I think he'll just end up going back in a year. I don't think you're buying permanently. No, to be fair, to be fair, he was pretty decent was when he? he came on. He fair came enough. on. He came on for Mina because he got injured, and we moved. Classic. Who was it? We we switched. Oh no! To be fair, we just switched to a four back, and we just tried to absolutely buy up the pitch. Fair enough. Um, and he was decent. So he was all right. Fair enough. Um, what still needs to be done then? Obviously, you've got those three incoming guys. Say that they do all come in. And I know mm -hmm. Onana is for a lot of money, so keep that in mind because you lot don't have any. Yeah. Um, what still needs to be done? Striker! ST Striker! <laughs> the reason we lost against Chelsea, we didn't have a striker. Get Dennis in. Get him in. Get Dennis in, get every, get anybody in. Dennis, sorry, you've got freaking oh, Corne signed for West Ham now, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, anybody, Any, just a striker. Anybody else just that striker. anybody else that hasn't been relegated from the Premier League? <laughs> Timu Pukin. Get um, Timu Pukin. Yeah, we could. We'll take you an Acho, mate. We'll, oh, we'll take oh yes. Get a striker in. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. like that. I like that. Yeah, um, see, target man could fit in pretty well with us, you see. So a striker, okay. Striker. Is that one? Is that two? Two. Oh, two. Is that Only two? Be, no, no, one permanent and one loan. Is that two on the presumption that Calvert Lewin goes? No, that's two on the presumption that Calvert Lewin's injured the entire season, which he probably will end up being. Okay. Most of the season, not all the season. Bringing he's in. He's out for six weeks right now. Okay, so maybe alone. Yeah, I can see that. Um, any other positions apart from two strikers? Um, we're I'm trying to think. Do we need another centre back? Who have you got? You've got Godfrey. He's good. Godfrey's just broken his ankle. You've got Mina, who's always injured. Yep. And you've Both got count. Michael Keane. Keane, who's an absolute. You've got Michael Keane, who's an absolute liability. Yep. Then you've got Cody and um, Cody, of course, Cody's Cody. Cody coming in, which is helpful. And you've got Tarkovsky. You've got Tarkovsky. Mm. So I'm, you've got uh, Holgate as well. Oh, you too. I forgot about him. He was decent, to be fair. So I think you should be all right. However, if you were to let go of Mina, 
I don't think we'll let go of Mina before the transfer window Fair shots. Enough. If you were to let go of Keen, maybe, then... I think we'll let go of Keen. Then maybe you need another one at that point. A young mm. lad would be ideal. Yes. You know, a... Just some breath well loud. Oh, breath weight. A, a 21, 22-year-old? Yeah. 21? I want to say 21 no I'm not talking yeah. about Brantway I'm talking about someone to bring in looking at a 21 22 oh. year old um, oh. who doesn't who won't have to start every game yeah or uh, just an old head who's happy to be a rotation option that's another option do you want Yannick Vestergaard um, absolutely not some, somebody of that kind of ilk is what I'm saying though yeah who who isn't needed at a bigger club um, that you could take on and use who still needs to go? Who still needs to be sold? Who still needs to be loaned? What still needs to be done? Um, so, I'm trying to think who we've just sent out on loan. I think we've... Who have we sent out? We've sent out... Bra- Brathway, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, Lewis Dobbin's gone out on loan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ellis Sims has gone out on loan. Tyler okay. Yango has gone out on loan. Okay. Um... Who else needs to be sold? Keen, Keen needs to go, but I don't think he'll go. Okay. In this window. Um, Andre Gomez has had a few links. Okay. Have you said, I don't, I may have missed it, but have you, have you, have you said, sorry, Salomon Rondon? Uh, I mean, for, for now, I'd keep them. Because Would you? We, we, because we're just in dire need of a striker. If we don't sign a striker, we have to keep them. Fair enough. However, if, if, if we get one in, maybe he'll want to leave, which will actually be a win <laughs> but to be, to be no he's just a championship striker that's what it is fair enough mate fair enough um <laughs> is that is yes yeah, asking so is that everything a winger we've got we've got for two we've got mcneil we've townsend got gordon, mcneil gray, gray gordon i've seen gray licked away with the move actually i could see one of gray or townsend yeah where would gray, gray go horrendous great horrendous I see what you mean now where would he go he is horrendous yeah but where would he go a championship club yeah but would you I want I like Reading or something I think I think he'll get a better move than that do you think so uh, why can I see him going to Watford for like 15 mil plus Dennis <laughs> no no not plus Dennis but no Dennis way. as in yeah so Watford yeah. would get 15 mil plus grey for Dennis yeah I could, I could see. I would take that. I could see something like that. Or However, the problem with Dennis is that Watford will want all the money up front. They wouldn't want it in instalments. How we've done it with who we did it with? We did it with McNeil and, and Onana. Kobe Onana, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, all right. Um, could could he go to Norwich? I'm thinking of a side like that. Yeah. Would Burnley take him under Vincent Company for like five mil? Potentially, seeing as though they've just got rid of Cornet and McNeil, they do need a left winger. I would have tried to. Him, I would have tried to include him in the McNeil deal. True. I don't know if you did, but I would have tried to include him in that and knocked down the price by five mil. Yeah. So I think that is his worth in these sort of deals, um, yeah. which is good because you made profit on him then. Yeah. You signed him for cheap. What did we sign for? It was about two million, I think it was. Exactly. So you know. That's fair enough. Who's the one to watch this season? Um, I'd say there's a lot of players to yeah. watch. However, if there's one, it's Alex Oyebe. And he, uh, this <laughs> sounds ridiculous. Yeah, I know. It does. Go on, go on. I'm really interested. I want to hear more. So Iwobi has, since Lampard has come in, mm-hmm. he's been converted to a centre mid. Okay. And since then, he's fa- he's found a way to sort of drop deeper and travel with the ball a bit more which I think was always his strength Mm -hmm. and especially now he's he's not a player that will score and assist a lot but it's weird because he'll make plenty of chances but he won't assist which is a very weird way to put it yeah I don't know how I I don't know how I could put it he gets the secondary assists yeah you can say that because he will travel with the ball, he'll give it to a winger, he'll put it in the box, have target strike or whoever the hell back post will take And then they'll score it. So he gets the second assist, yeah. Um, okay, that is, that's a surprise. I know you've raved about him, um, but it's such a weird one with him because obviously he moved from Arsenal for that big money move of 40 million and he did not work out. 
with that, surely not. It did not work. He wasn't a winger, and that was quite clear to see. Um, or at least he wasn't performing out on the wing. Um, if he has been moved centrally and that is working, then fair play to him. If you would put a transfer value on him, what, how much would you sort of say he is worth? I know you're not looking to sell him, but just sort of as an idea of how good he is. About 10 to 15 million. 10 to 15 million. So, mm -hmm. compare him to Dennis Pratt. Yeah. Is that so the he's, sort he's of level? basically an English Pratt. No, he's not an English Pratt. Nigerian. Dennis Pratt. Yeah, Nigerian as He's well. a Nigerian like Pratt, okay. Um, okay, interesting. Interesting, okay. So he could be a one to watch then. O outside of him, who else could you say is a our place to keep an eye on? Um, McNeil is going to be an interesting one to see how he does because 20, 20 million is a lot for someone who doesn't get many contributions, uh -huh. saying that he is also the main replacement for someone who had our most goal contributions last season. Yep. So he'll be an interesting one to see whether he gets an, whether he's going to be a person who creates a lot of chances or whether he'll be someone who is made to travel with the ball like a Wobi or something. Maybe like even someone who can sort of be someone who stays back while the fullbacks would go up. He would sort of stay back a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's it, it's really he, he plays a weird role against Chelsea. He played a very weird role. He was sort of turning into a wing back while Patterson advanced higher at the pitch. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. There'll be decor. We'll see. We'll see how interesting he of does course. because very very good game. Apart from until he gave the penalty away, which yes. was, in my opinion, the worst possible thing that could have happened. Okay. Just a minute away from the game to end, and yeah. that was it. And he gave away a penalty. Okay, and then outside of that, is there anybody else? Is Patterson maybe one? I'd say uh, Patterson maybe is one because he's finally getting his chance to start, and he's proved, and he's trying to prove a point. Especially now, he's already had his first appearance and he performed very well. Fair enough. And Tarkovsky would be my final one. Tarkovsky, okay. Even though everyone, I think most people know what he already brings. You know, you, you'll have like a solid centre back. He'll mm -hmm. always win headers and stuff. Yeah, and we needed a centre back like that for ages now. Fair enough. Um, I've got three more questions. Um, the first one is a bit of a prediction. Frank Lampard, mm -hmm. does he stay until the end of the season? We know what your board's like. We know you like to suck managers. I can't remember the last time you had a manager for more than two seasons. It's been a long time. Does he remain until the end of the season? I think it depends on what, if he, if Everton are higher than twelfth by Christmas, he stays. If okay. not, he goes. That's high expectations. That is. No, but this is the Everton board one. About I'm doing this in perspective of the. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. But even for them, that's high expectations. It is. Because you're, because... you're you you could get relegated. I th to be fair, we are, we are still going to be in a relegation battle this season. Exactly. I think, I think however, anything right. anything above 15th is good. Fair enough. Genuinely. Maybe and 13th, maybe 12th was too optimistic. Yeah, maybe fair 13th. enough. So, your prediction, do you think he stays? I think he stays the season. Wow. Wow. Is this finally a turn in ways for Everton then? Probably not. Because he won't stay until the end of the season. He probably won't stay till the end of the season, but I think he could. You think he could? Okay, fair enough. And then how are we looking for the season? How do you think it will end up planning out? I mean, I don't want to say anything yet because we always have good starts to the season. Um, last year under Benitez, we went five games unbeaten and then by the way, before we knew it, we were 18th. By the way, a good start to the season for Everton is losing 1-0. I just want to put that into perspective. What do you mean? A good start to the season for Everton is losing 1-0 to Chelsea. Is that really what I mean, a good start is? The, the, I mean, the, the good bit about it is the way we... I mean, because we were the better side on the day, I think. I uh -huh. think Chelsea's defence was just absolutely solid. Mm -hmm. Thiago Silvia had... I think he was the man of the match. He, I thought he was incredible. Fair enough. Um, Koulibaly had an absolutely solid debut. You had Ben Chilwell always causing problems. Eventually won the penalty. Um, you had Reese James as always threatening an attack. 
mm-hmm. you have Kante just sat he just sat there with in, in front of that okay, back so, four fair enough no, back, back four back fair four. enough so so it, it was a good start then it was a decent start because they did just sit back and defend um, performance wise yes but, um, result wise obviously not yeah obviously um so is it is is it top 15 you're looking for top 10 how g- give me a position by the last five games of the season i don't want us to have to worry about relegation okay like we're no as in not completely not worry like not completely not worry about it but like you're we are favorites okay. out of the relegation like of all teams in the relegation scrap i want us to be the favorite to Step. survive okay what what's your end position do you think I think we finished 14th. 14th, okay. Okay, fair enough. I can... What did I say? Obviously, as a non-Leicester fan. Obviously, as non-Everton fan. I said 15th. Fair enough. I, I can 15th. see both. To be fair. Either it will go extremely well, or it will go extremely badly. What is well? There's no in the middle. Well, it, well is um, what I said, just keeping out the relegation scrap by the end of the five, last five games. Fair enough. And obviously, badly is relegation. Yes. Okay, and then give me predictions on the cups. Um, I think we'll go out early in the FA Cup. I'm I'm predicting a round three exit. So okay. I don't even know a championship sign. I'm assuming. Fair enough. And the EFL Cup, I think we'll make quarterfinals. Quarterfinals. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's that's not an awful season, personally. I think we'll get an easy route in the quarter to the quarterfinals of the EFL. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. What I will do is we will take another short break before we join me and Javier to start doing some transfer ratings while also doing a mini scout report on uh, who could possibly replace Wesley Fofana at Leicester. What's up guys, welcome back to the PL pod on Daniel Talks Football right here on YouTube. Before we get into this segment, the final time I'm going to remind you, make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn your notifications on, make sure you like the video and make sure you go and comment down below. What have you thought of the show so far? Is there anything you've disagreed on? How do you think Everton are going to do? And uh, are you going to disagree with any of these transfer ratings? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, transfer ratings. The first player we have to talk about is Maxwell Cornet. Obviously, Cornet is Ivorian. He's 25 and he's moved from Burnley to West Ham for a reported fee of £18.6 million according to Transfer Market, which is where I've taken all of these fees from. Javier, what rating would you give to Cornet? Um, I'd give it a... What was that, sorry? An 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10. Sorry, we do realise there's uh, some issues with Javier's, mics, uh, with Javier's mic. So, yes, we did not hear that originally. An 8 out of 10. Okay, fair enough. Um, any explanation behind that? Um, well, do you, I, I don't know where he'll play. Either he'll play on the wing or up front. But I'm, just, I'm assuming he won't play up front because they've just got could some play, matter, Could he play left back? Please, but God, he could play left back. Because he did even play there at Lyon. He did, was yeah. Lyon. Lyon. Yeah. Um, who's the left back? Is it Cresswell? Cresswell. I think it's Cresswell. I could say, uh, to be fair, he's just brought in as a versatile player. Yeah, he, I see that. If you've, let's say you've got a West Ham in conference this year. Yep. So it helps with that. Exactly. Yeah. You so, can play corner some games, but you can play yeah. Cresswell, then you can even rotate the forwards. Yeah. So it's a good rotation option. Yes. And you've gone for an an 8 out of 10? Yes. Okay. Personally, I'm not giving it that high. I think I'll give it a a 6.5. Why so low? Personally, I don't think that's that low. If it was low, I'd give it like a 3. Fair enough. Um, He's good... 18.6 18.6 million for a rotation option isn't bad. I just don't know where exactly he's going to play, and sometimes that doesn't work out mm-hmm. for players if they're not sure where they're going to play and they're, move, and they're moving around a lot. Um, I think he's a good player. Good age. Got resale value if it doesn't work. It's not the worst decision in the world. I'm just not overly happy. Um, so, yeah, I'll give that a 6.5 out of 10. Um... Maxwell, uh, not Maxwell Cornet, sorry, Levi Colwell. 
Um, he's obviously English, uh, 19 years old. He's moved from Chelsea to Brighton on a loan move. How do you rate this one? I'd say a... In terms, of, I mean, I want to say it in terms of the way it worked for Chelsea, but at the same time, it's not how it works because it worked well for Chelsea because then it meant that they could get Cucurella in. Uh -huh. But in terms of Brighton, I think it was. I think they went for the wrong player. I think they could have gone for someone like Hudson Odoi or something. Okay. Because you've got Lewis Dunk, you've got. Who else have you got? You've got, to be fair, Webster's not great. You've got Veltman, who's been consistent mm -hmm. well, was consistent last year yep got Dunk, Dunk's obviously a good one Webster's I, I, tell you, I, don't, I, I tell you I don't know about Webster I don't know who else they have a centre back uh, maybe they've, let, good, they've but... let Duffy go on loan to Fulham um, okay so I presume it's the replacement there that's fair enough then how much are you going to give it I'm going to give it then a 7 out of 10 I'm giving it higher I'm giving it nine. Well, it's a loan move. If it doesn't work out, he goes back to Chelsea at the end of the year. Yes, and if it does work well, then what? He goes back to Chelsea at the end of the year. You've got a good player for a year. That's true. Yes, long term it possibly isn't great, but still, you know, if that's the kind of player that maybe pushes them, you know, an extra position up the league, that's an extra two mil into the that's back balance for next year. So. I didn't think about that actually. It might just help improve their position. It's in the short term, it's a very good sign. Long term, obviously not. However, it secures them if it doesn't go well. So I don't think it's the worst thing. First season in the Prem as well. So obviously that helps Chelsea. Nine out of ten, personally. Good full parties. Um, next one. A man that I have a feeling you might be a little bit salty with, which is Cucurella. Why salty? Oh because fantasy oh because you put him in your fantasy team and you got zero points yeah ha ha, ha. um Cucurella, though Spanish 24 moved from Brighton to Chelsea after only moving to Brighton last summer for around 18 million pounds I do believe he's moved from Brighton to Chelsea for 58.7 million pounds for a player that doesn't guarantee to start week in week out because left back they've got Chilwell centre back they've got an array of options that's a lot of money that's a 5 out of 10 mm -hmm. however if say if Koulibaly or just say if one of the centre backs pick up an injury or Chilwell gets another injury you've got Koukouane who could play left centre back mm -hmm. and you've also got a left wing back for if Koukouane I think the fee's a lot, but I think he, I, I think he's good. However, mm -hmm. will he prove to be someone who's a 58 million player? Probably not. Yeah. Okay, so and five out of ten. I think he won't be given the opportunity to be to prove that. Fair enough. So you've gone for five. Yes. Maybe lower. I'm going. You know, what, I'm going to agree on five. I think it's a lot of money, but I do think he's a good player for a backup they could have done so much exactly yeah I know I know I know I know it. it's a lot of money for a backup and I agree with that mm -hmm. but he's still a good player yes so 58.7 that's a lot of money but yeah I'm re it's a it's a lot of, he's, he's he's a good good player but it's for a backup and you don't need that you only you don't need that quality of player for a backup you don't need no, you could. Who, could, who could. Who else could they have got? They've Mate, you put them in the uh, They could have got Corne. That's a true point, to be fair. Seeing as though they've also just lost Werner, they've lost another striker. Now I don't have a clue who plays up front. Brozier? Who plays up front? Havertz as a false nine? <sighs> Sterling as a false nine? I'll keep on forgetting they have Sterling. <laughs> even though I've literally slandered him. Because he goes down to the floor so easy. Yeah, um, alright. Fair enough. So we've both agreed on 5 out of 10 for Kukurella then. Kasper yeah. Schmeichel. Um, obviously, Danish, 35 years old. Has moved from my beloved Leicester to Nice uh, for 900,000. He had one year left in his deal. What are your thoughts on this one for Nice? Um, 
I'd say a six because for 900,000 you've got a keeper who will give you a solid two or three years mm -hmm. he will I don't know when he's finishing each year but they've got they've got a decent little squad I think they've got yeah they're in the right league Atal who's they got Atal him Atal they've got Dolberg is Dolberg still there yeah Dolberg I don't know who else but they seem to have I mean if, they, if they're in um, Europa League they're, they're clearly doing squad, something yeah. They've got yeah, Ramsey, they, haven't they? Oh yeah, he scored with his first touch or something. I don't know. Impossible. People's first touch. So it's a decent move. Yeah. What are you giving it out of ten? Oh, I said I think I said like a seven. Do you say seven? Okay, fair enough. I must have missed that. Um, I'll back. I'll I'll give him seven point five. Solid mm -hmm. keeper. Was time for Leicester to? Was it time for Leicester? I would have taken him for another year, but if he wanted to go, it was time for Leicester to move on. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's, it's a fair one. The next one, Chuck Wemeka. Carney Chuck Wemeka is, is uh, English, is 18 years old. He's moved from Aston Villa to Chelsea for £16.2 million. Pounds. I'm going to go out there now. I think this is stupid from Chelsea. I don't think it's worth that much money. Um, you know, Villa fans were saying there's better players in their academy. Um... I th I'm giving like like a four. I think I'd say that as well because a year left on his contract. He's 18 years old. You could have easy. You have all the negotiating power in that thing. Mm -hmm. You you tr you you have to try and bring that down to at least single digits. Yeah. Not double digits. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree fully. It's not a good deal, especially for someone who's not going to be playing that much football this year. Uh huh. As I say, fully, fully agree. Um, I'm not a fan of it at all. Mm -mm. Not a fan of it at all. Um, well, I think he's. A, oh, sorry. Oh, no, well, keep going. Keep while going. I, oh wait. Oh yeah. While I think he's a good player. The next three years he'll be gone. Next three years he'll be gone. Oh, really? Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So four out of ten, you've said then, yeah? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, again, I do apologise for Javier's mic. Mic keep cutting out. I do apologise. Um, the next one, Bern Leno, German, thirty years old. He's moved from Arsenal to Fulham for an initial three point two million pounds. Solid, absolutely Bargain. solid. Bargain. Now that now that that could be a nine point five for me. Nine point five. Wow. Okay. You've got a you've got a keeper who gave what was it? It was a good six was it, no it was six years. It was about couple, couple of years. Three, a, a three few, four years. A few. Yeah, um, he was <laughs> one of he was he 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 possibly could have been him and a Bamyang that one season. I think it was eighteen nineteen. He was probably one of the reasons that they didn't finish in the bottom half of the table. Okay. And I think for three point two million, you can't go wrong with someone like that because mm -hmm. he's got plenty to give. Yeah. So you're giving it a nine point five. A nine point five. Love, love the signing. Is on a fair. Is he's on a deal until twenty twenty five? I think. The only thing is, if he plays really, really poorly and they can't get rid of him. But I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm not taking it into account too much. I'm going nine. Okay. I like the signing, I do. I'm just not going to give it any higher because... I don't know, there's something about it that makes me feel a little bit uneasy about going any higher. Fair enough. It's a bargain price. 30 is a good age for a keeper, in his prime as a keeper. How good's he going to be after sitting on the Arsenal bench for a year? We'll have to see. We will. I like the signing though, I do. The next one I'm, I don't like. Marcus Tavernier. He's English, he's 23. He's gone from Middlesbrough to Bournemouth for £10.7 million. I don't like this and I don't know why. Nope. I think it's too much for a championship player. And it's he is weird. a championship player. Mm, I don't think he's anything, I don't think he's any better than that. No. He's he's a good championship player, but he's not a Premier League quality Premier player, League I don't think. Good. No. You can clip this up and send it to me at the end of the year if you want. But I don't think he's Premier League standard. I'm going five just because he's young and they might get relegated and he'll be good in the championship. 
Yeah. I'd give it a... 5.5. 5.5, okay, fair enough, fair enough. And then uh, the last one that we've got to uh, rate, Mangala. Oh, Mangala has gone uh, has gone from uh, Stuttgart to Nottingham Forest. He's Belgian. He's twenty four, and he's gone for eleven point seven million pounds. Well, the signing is good. This is getting to the point where it's too much for Forest. Agreed. I, I think we'll touch on that in just a second. We'll talk about Mangala first, and then we will move on to talk about Forest. Um, I think he's a very good signing. However. I, yeah, I just, uh, he doesn't start. You not think so? No. Who does he start in front? If he starts in front of Yates, then they're he probably, won't start Yates. That Lingard, and then, you know, have they brought in another midfielder? O'Brien. O'Brien, oh yeah, of course, of course. He doesn't start. He doesn't. He's the backup for Yates. And 11.7 million for a club that could get relegated. I'm not saying they will, but could. Mm -hmm. It's a backup when you've got Jack Colback who could do that. I know he's not Premier League quality. I don't know if he would get an injury to Yates, then he could be in trouble. Mm -hmm. But you need to keep some of that squad together. Yeah, you do. So I'm going six because he is young and he is a good player. I'm saying, I'd probably say that as well, but I, I don't know anything about Van Carla. All I know is he's a centre mid. I don't, I don't know what he's good at. What you don't, he's good you at. Don't. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So, I do just want to touch on um, on Forest then for a second before we move on to this next bit. Um, do you think they're doing too much then? Yes. They that entire squad core. He's gone. gone. Yeah. Spencer's left. Lowe has left, you have Garner who's left, Keenan's left, mm -hmm. Graben's gone. You've got too many, I think Graben would have been a decent extension because he's got the Premier League experience. Uh -huh. I think maybe a one year deal for him, but if he wants to go then he wants to go obviously. But Yeah, and then they've just, they've, they've signed too many outsiders, too many foreign players. Yeah, I'll agree, there's not enough Premier League experience in there. Maybe, let me think of a Premier League I've heard, player. by the way, they're trying to jump on a deal for Gakpo. No chance. Oh, yes, um, I heard about that. I also saw on um, Fab's Instagram that um, Real Betis left back, who is he? Alex Moreno, that's it. He He's not going. rejected a move. Yeah, so they want a left back. Another one when they've already got Omar Richardson to follow. Mm -hmm. I know Richards is in injured, but then why do you sign him? Yeah. Because apparently he was injured when he signed. Who's doing the medical there? Right. Someone has to be sacked then. Um, I've heard they won another midfielder. Yeah. Mangala, um, O'Brien, Lingard, Yates, Colback, Cafu. Sure, you need another okay, midfielder. Yeah. And then I've heard they need another strike. They want another striker. Sorry, do you want you to Taylor? If they would, if they would get all those players, that'd be fifteen new signings. It's Fulham two point I think at that point it is. I liked the business. To start off with. But that Mangala signing is starting to push me to this is getting too much. They need to stop now, and then I think it's okay. Okay. I think the issue is with Forest, is they do need to sign these players because their squad isn't Premier League quality. Yeah. But they won't they gel. Budget, but, but they yeah. won't gel so it's a lose lose. Yeah. I think that's how it's got to, that's what it's got to come down to. It is just a lose lose. Yeah. Um Okay, and then the final thing I wanted to go through, uh, before we round off the show is I wanted to do a scout report quickly for uh for everybody at home. Um So yeah, Wesley Fafana. Um Wesley Fofana is a Leicester centre-back, as we all know, and he has been recently rumoured with a move away to Chelsea for um, around 80 to £85 million. Pounds. Um, Wes went straight down the tunnel after the Brentford game and did not applaud the fans. You know, the game finished, he went straight down the tunnel. Um, 
Obviously, uh, St Etienne do have a 20% sell-on clause for Wesley Fofana, while Leicester City do also have financial issues at the moment. While uh, while needing to strengthen in other areas, um, this means that my replacement that I'm aiming to get, I'm looking for them to be around or below the thirty million pound mark. Um, I've picked out three centre backs that are, funnily enough, all from the Bundesliga, which just shows how much talent there is from the Bundesliga, especially uh, by Leverkusen. By the way, they have Hinkapi, Tar. Um, Kasunu and Tapsoba. That's mental from them. So fair play to, their, to them for getting some great centre backs in. I've picked out three centre backs from the Bundesliga here, and I'm. I think there will be three good options. After we've run through them, we're gonna ask uh, the guest on the line, uh, Javier, who he thinks would be the best option. The first one is Jonathan Tarr. Now, the first thing to say is Leicester City have had interest in Tarr before. When they lost Harry Maguire, I do believe, and I believe the summer after that, or was it the summer? They've had interest in him before. I know I've seen his name linked with Leicester loads of times in the past. Um, I believe when we signed for Fana, he was the he was the other option to Fafana basically. However, we did just end up going for for Fafana. Um, so they have had interest in him before. Now Tar is obviously German and he plays for Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, last season he played thirty three games for the uh, for the German club in the Bundesliga, scoring two goals and getting three assists. He missed uh, getting three assists. Sorry, from centre back of course, which is very very good he missed no games through suspension which is going to be a key factor when we move on to mention the next player um he played 29 bundesliga 90s um while getting 280 2000 sorry 882 total bundesliga minutes um these next few stats are going to th going to uh, be courtesy of sofa score so thank you for them uh thank you to them for supplying these and getting these great app uh, great website sorry um so if you do need any stats make sure you head on to there because they have some really really quality stats um tar has averaged 1.3 interceptions per game uh which is which is quite good 88 percent pass accuracy which is the highest of the three i do believe um yeah the highest of the three um i've picked out uh just over nine uh sorry just over 69.5 touches per game while committing zero penalties um so zero fouls that have led to a penalty of course 4.7 clearances per game while standing at 6.3 feet tall uh Transfer market value at 22.5 million, so you could probably get a deal done for around the 25 to 26 million pounds mark with transfer market classically undervaluing players. Well, valuing players as they should correctly be valued, but the market would end up increasing those prices because we are working in a high market at the moment. Tart is right footed, right footed and has a contract that expires in 2025. He is option number one. Option number two is Maxence Lacroix. Lacroix is French and he plays for VFL Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga. Uh, last season he played 29 games and got zero goal involvements. He did however miss four Bundesliga games through suspension. That is a big point. Four Bundesliga games through suspension. He played 24 Bundesliga 90s throughout the whole season while getting 2,498 total minutes in the Bundesliga. 2.1 interceptions per game with an 81% pass accuracy. He did get 69.7 touches per game uh, three penalties committed throughout the whole season which again is not excellent um, so that is something to sort of note um, 4.8 clearances per game which is a uh, which is just which is just lower than Tars, just higher than Tars. Sorry, six point three feet tall and uh, an eighteen million pound transfer market value. Again, he is right footed and has a contract that expires in twenty twenty five. The final option we have is Evan Ndika. Evan Ndika plays for uh, France. He is a uh, he plays for Frankfurt in the Bundesliga. Um, last season he played thirty two games for the uh, German outfit, scoring four goals and getting four assists from centre-back um, again no games missed through suspension 31 
Bundesliga 90 throughout the entire of the 21-22 season. Um, he also played a big role in Frankfurt's Europa League win, uh, playing 100 minutes in that final and playing consistently throughout the games leading up to that. 2,858 total Bundesliga minutes with 1.5 interceptions per game. Um, 84% pass accuracy, 73.3 touches per 90, which is a lot higher than both Tar and Lecroix. Uh, he did commit one one foul that led to a penalty throughout the uh, whole Bundesliga season. Um, 4.1 clearances per game that again is lower than both Tar and um, Lecroix. 6.2 feet tall. Trans market do however value on at 28.8 million. So this could be one that does just maybe breach that, um, that 30 million pounds mark. However, he is left footed which is key as there are not many left-footed centre-backs available on the market. Leicester City's uh, signing of Yannick Vestergaard hasn't worked out, who is obviously also left-footed. So he could be someone that maybe comes in to help replace him if they look to move him on. With also a contract expiring in 2023, which is another key factor with obviously only one year remaining on that deal. So Javier, we've got a lot of stats there and a lot of information, but out of the three centre-backs named, who do you think could be the one that Leicester could push to get if they were to lose Fafana? Well, how much would you say? I mean, I'm trying to think of the three names. So it was Ndika, Lacroix and Tar. We had uh, Ndika, Lacroix and Tar. Okay. I think, out of that entire, I think um, Ndika is the best okay. um, option. And that's because he comes with his presence. He's six yeah. foot four. He's huge. He can get assists. He can score. He's six foot two, by the way. Six foot two? I searched it up last night. According according to uh, Transfer Market, I think I got the measurement from me six foot two. Fair. I thought he was about six four. Never mind. Me six foot. It was still. He's got a presence. Six foot two. Yeah, six foot two is not small. It's definitely not small. Um, I think he's. He, he didn't. You say he has like the highest pass accuracy of the three. Uh, yeah, the yeah. He had a eighty-four percent pass accuracy compared to eighty-one. No, he had the second highest. Sorry, Tar has the highest with eighty-eight percent. Do you have a ball? Do you have a ball playing centre back? Fafana. Oh, is he your ball playing centre back? Fafana is the ball playing centre back. Yeah, so a French ball playing centre back being replaced by a French ball playing centre back. Yeah, I like I like Ndika because he's left footed. Yeah. That's rare. With a contract expiring in 2023, you probably get it done for 30 mil. Yeah. He's he's personally my favourite option. Then I'd go Tard, then I'd go Lacroix. I'm not convinced about Lacroix. I think he's a bit too rash. Neither do I. That's a mix of eye test and stats that have backed that up. Mm-hmm. Are you going Indica then? Yes. Didn't Lacroix also get a suspension last year? Yeah, Lacroix picked up. Lacroix missed four Bundesliga games through suspension, while also uh, three fouls that lead that led to penalties, which is which both those stats are higher than the other two centre backs named. Yeah. So they all cost. Well, how much would indeed? How I much think, do you reckon? I realistically, and Dika would be thirty because he's got a contract expiring twenty twenty three. Okay. Um. I think Lacroix would be about 25 and I think Tar would be about 30. How old are all of these? Tar is 26, I think. Okay. I don't have the, I forgot to note this down. Um, Lacroix is 22, 23 and Indica is 22, I want to say. So Tar's the older one out of the two. Lacroix and Indica are the same kind of age. Mm-hmm. Well, and to be fair, you could say Tarazor because he brings, well, he's 26, he's played more games. Mm-hmm. So that could bring his experience. However, you've got, I think you've got plenty of experience in that back line already with Evans. Yeah, with Evans. Evans is still decent, isn't he? Yeah, he's just become club captain this uh, since Casper left. Um, oh, well, so cool. Is Is Ndika the one you're going for then? Yes. Okay. Evan and Dika is the man that uh, the PL pod has recommended uh, Leicester City to go out and sign. And with that, I think we have just about come to the end. It's been an absolute pleasure and I hope everybody at home has enjoyed it. Uh, the first PL pod and hopefully many, many more to come. Um, thank you for coming on, mate. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. 
Good to hear, mate. Anyway, what I will do is we will uh, what we will do is we will round off the podcast there, and I will catch you all again next week, Wednesday, six pm, which is when these podcasts come out. See ya.